Good morning, and welcome to the SOLIDWORKS Visualize Photo Rendering 10.4 Tech Talk. This is a 10.4 Tech Talk every Thursday, 10 o'clock, the fourth week of each and every month. I'm Todd Majewski, your host for today. Our Tech Talk is on SOLIDWORKS Visualize Photo Rendering. Our presenter is Brandon Nelms, Application Engineer for 3D Vision Technologies. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Thanks, Todd. Hey, B I would like to tell the audience uh, about you. So Brandon currently lives in Indianapolis, Indiana. He's a degree mechanical engineer from Rose Holman, has worked for Timken Bearing in the Texas region, working in the industry, helping customers with bearing applications, and is now with 3D Vision Technologies as a SolidWorks application engineer. So Brandon, can you summarize some of the key things you hope to show today, or why should someone be listening to this presentation? Uh, absolutely, Todd. So there's a lot of noise right now with SOLIDWORKS Visualize and Rendering. A lot of people have heard about it, but there's a lot of questions of what is it and why should I use it and how do I use it. So hopefully what I can show here over our tech talk is one, how to use SOLIDWORKS, how to use SOLIDWORKS Visualize, just a basic overview, and then also show why would I use PhotoView 360 or why would I use uh, SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Yes, because there are two options right now. There's That's the old product, SOLIDWORKS, or PhotoWorks 360 is the old rendering package. Now we have this new option. So, all right, so Brandon, let's turn the presentation over to you. Thanks, Todd. Right out of the gate, wanted to talk a little bit about SOLIDWORKS Visualize, just to get an overview. SOLIDWORKS Visualize actually comes in two styles. You've got standard and professional. Standard is going to get you photo quality still images, and then professional is more for animations. But what some customers may not know is that the standard actually is free with a current subscription of SOLIDWORKS Professional or Premium, just like PhotoView 360. So, well, wait a minute, Brandon, is this replacing PhotoView 360? Absolutely not. No, this is not intended to replace. It's more to enhance. So why are there two products then? PhotoView 360 is a great product. It's still useful. We'll talk about it a little bit later here, when to use what and why we want to go that way. But SOLIDWORKS definitely wanted to bring something to its customers where you can get real magazine quality images, something that's real lifelike. And that just wasn't capable inside of PhotoView 360, right? So we needed something else, and that's where Visualize came in. All right, so it's taking rendering to the next level. Absolutely. Great. So during this tech talk, just a quick agenda for us. We're going to go through and do a fun little game show, or at least what I perceive to be fun. We'll talk about the process for Visualize, which is very similar in a sense to PhotoView 360 or to like shooting a movie where we got to have to get our cast, get our makeup ready, our lights, camera, then we're action ready to shoot. And like with most movies, you're never done with those takes, so you're going to have to do something again. Then we'll talk a little bit about why would I use PhotoView 360 or why uh, use Visualize, and we'll recap everything. So we get to play real or render. That's, that's the best I can do for right now. Uh, I'm going to show you two sets of images. One set is actual professional photographs. The other set is just CAD data and rendered using Visualize. So your goal as an audience member here, and we'll have a poll in a second, uh, to, is to pick which set of images is real. So let's take a look here. We've got group A on the left here of a set of images, or group B on the right. Ah, so if you pick A, it's the... A is the winner. It's real. Okay. Those are actual real images. So we had about half the audience was able to, to distinguish, uh, but the other half of the audience couldn't tell the difference. And in fact, they thought the images on the right were actually uh, real images, and the ones on the left were rendered. Okay, so this has all been developed using SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Yep. Half the people could tell, half people couldn't. Now, I bet you sometimes it was a guess, too. <laughs> Flip a coin. So let's talk a little bit about how do we go about doing this. We're going to talk about how to use Visualize. And to do that, we're going to need a cast, right? We need some, some players in this game. So we're going to look at adding in geometry. What settings do I pick? 
and how do I set up for changes down the road. So if we come into Visualize, all we're doing is going into our Models tab here, and we're going to import a model. So then we'll go and find what our model is. And in this case, we're using an Indy car because we've got Memorial Day weekend coming up, and the, the race is coming up, so we've got to use an Indy car. Absolutely. So here is where we get our import settings. One of the ch options I have checked here, and this is important for setting ourselves up down the road, is to monitor this file so that if changes are made, I'll know and visualize. The next section is on part grouping. This can be a little daunting, and especially out of the gate, don't worry about this. Most people want to try and figure out ways to group parts. Visualize does an awesome job of grouping things together if we use automatic by either uh, appearances or parts uh, in an assembly. So nine times out of ten, you'll just want to use automatic, and especially want to use automatic out of the gate, and if you need to go back, change it. So when we say OK, we'll bring in our model. And I'll just snap it to the floor here. We've got our CAD geometry in. So you can see it actually pulled our CAD geometry right inside of Visualize. And you can see it's got all of our different parts here listed. So the two main things to remember with this is monitoring the file for change. That's important to be able to, to know if there's been an update. And out of the gate, use automatic part grouping. As you get more advanced, you'll start to learn what the others mean and what they're needed for. But 9 out of 10, you're going to be fine with automatic. The next part is the makeup, right? You can't just start shooting those Hollywood actors, right? They've got to get all made up and pretty. So we're going to talk about appearances, painting parts, how to adjust stuff, and the different material libraries, and a little bit on texture mapping and decals. So if we go back into Visualize, appearances are real easy. I just come into my libraries here, and there's all kinds of appearances that I can pick from. So I can pick any of these different uh, appearances, paint or whatever. There's also an option to be able to toggle between your local or a cloud-based library, which I can actually pick stuff uh, that I don't have loaded and get all of these awesome different um, textures that are out available to me, basically built in without being on our, our hard drive. What I've done is actually added a little folder here so that we can use this. Um, and I can just grab, and it's easy to just drag and drop. I just wow. drag and drop stuff in. Drag and drop. Maybe I want this light gray here. And rather than go through and continue doing all of those, let's just open up one that I've done. So this is a already pre-rendered image, right? So does it take long to render these? It's, it's an interesting point that you bring up because SolidWorks Visualize is actually in here in my graphics area rendering in real time. That's one of the modes I have set up. It's one of the key differences between PhotoView 360 and Visualize. Uh, when you're working in PhotoView 360, you've got your CAD image and then you'll have a render window where you can see what it looks like. But in Visualize, you can set yourself up where, uh, in this case, it's fast, so it's 100 passes. Uh, I could set it up to be accurate, and as long as I leave it alone, it'll keep going. Uh, and it gives me a chance to adjust these materials and adjust my lighting and everything and see in real time what it's going to look like. Oh, got it. So you don't have to wait for the rendering to finish. Absolutely. On some of these, I've got something like carbon fiber. This is another cool part of it where I can actually map textures to it. So you can see on my rear and front wings, I've actually mapped a specular texture to it. So uh, it's actually mapping a texture to this color. So I can actually use bump, too, if I wanted to make it actually look like it's woven carbon fiber. I could do that. Um, but you can spend a lot of time tweaking these. That's where you can get real high quality uh, images that look so real. The other part is the decals. Decals are really easy. It's just a drag and a drop and res resize. So you would just bring in from this side a new decal here, go to your, fi your image file, bring it in, and then just drag it and drop it and resize it. So do you have to prepare your decals ahead of time, or you just take your image and then you can scale it inside this package? You can scale it in here, absolutely. 
The one thing that I like to do with my images, especially with decals, is I use PNG files. Mm -hmm. So that's where I can actually uh, have empty space behind it. Like you'll notice here uh, on this uh, circular one, that's actually the color of the fin through that because the only aspects of this decal are the black lines. So it's actually like a decal that would be put on. The thing to remember with the makeup is it's real simple. It's just drag, drop, and tweak. Yes. I did look very easy. Yeah. And I set this up in advance because you can spend a lot of time tweaking materials, right? Tweaking textures. And that's definitely where you take your rendering to the next level. Uh, in the interest of time here, we're just going to uh, accept what I've already created a little bit and move on. But you can see it's just dragging and dropping them on, dragging and dropping them on. The next, next aspect is the lights. So we want to set up lights in an environment. Key things to note here is about using the HDRs that are available uh, and then going in and adjusting brightness. We can also rotate our um, scene around so that we can actually get the reflections or the lights different. Um, and then we can add in a, a scene backlight. So inside of Visualize, I've done that as well in a new project. Lighting is another area where you can spend a lot of time. Todd. The default, what people want to do when they start talking about lighting or start doing lighting and rendering um, is try and add in a bunch of spotlights and everything mm -hmm. uh, and try and create the, the lighting the way that they think it ought to look just by doing it themselves. HDRs actually provide something that's much more realistic and lifelike because it actually provides not only the lighting, uh, but also provi provides reflection and stuff that you can see here uh, in the sides of this, this model. So using HDR sometimes is a shortcut instead of just putting spotlights all over the place because we did a production in our office with a, a production crew and they brought tons of these little lights and kept fiddling with the lights for probably an hour just right. to get the reflections just right when they were filming. And I thought, wow, I didn't, I didn't think it would take that long. Can't you just take a camera and start shooting? Yeah, and you'd think, right? And that's something where, uh, from our libraries, we could go into an environment and just drag and drop these in, which is what I've done. But you're absolutely right, right? If I wanted to set it up completely from scratch, it's going to take me a long time to tweak all of that. And in fact, especially for uh, early users, you may not know exactly, or if you're not a professional photographer, you don't know exactly how to do that. So what I suggest people doing is dragging and dropping these, rotating it, getting it to where you can see pretty close to what you want um, and then a lot of times you'll need to maybe adjust the brightness right so you'll get a um, environment that it's getting the lights and the shadows and the, the lightness of the model where you want it and how you want it just not quite bright enough mm -hmm. so if you come in you can uh, adjust this and make it a little bit brighter well looking at the image on the screen it looks like that car is on the Indianapolis 500 grace track right now that's right well, it's definitely not right now. I think they're still they're running probably practice or something today. Uh, but yeah, that's actually an image from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Um, not one that I took, though. Um, with the lighting, I will say there are times to use lights, one of which is spotlights. And I use spotlights a lot of times for casting the shadows on the ground, right? So when I'm creating the environment and wanting to see how is the whole object going to be lit up. I'm looking at the object and seeing how everything's reflecting and where is it bright, where is it dark. Make sure that that's right and don't let an HDR environment limit me from a shadow standpoint because I want to be able to cast the shadow on the ground. So that's where I would add in a directional light here just for that one shadow. That's all I'm trying to get. There was a blog I did and we'll put it here in the um, chat window, actually focusing a lot on this. It was for the College Football National Trophy, mm -hmm. and I wanted it in a very unusual environment, and that is on the Friday night lights, if you will, on a football field where you'd have large tower lights casting multiple shadows on the ground. Well, the HDR environments will give you some shadow on the ground, but you can't control 
the direction of the shadow as easily or cast it long like I'm casting here long. So it's a trick to be able to add in on top of your HDR, but you definitely want to start there um, and don't try adding uh, a bunch of lights. You want to add as few lights as possible. So you recommend people to read your blog that's in the chat window uh, if they're planning to learn a little bit more about how to use directional lights. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Let's go back in here. I've also added a back plate. So this is that image you were talking about here. Mm -hmm. When we are adjusting our scene, it's just as easy here as adding a new back plate, going to any image, and then making that my active back plate. So that's what's actually used. It's using the environment to get all of the reflections, all of the um, lights, but I've given it a different back plate here in this case. Now, if I did not have either of these, it would actually use the HDR environment also has uh, images too to be used as a back plate. So that's a great point too. Uh, you talk about trying to be faster with it. In this case, I wanted it to be at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Unfortunately, we don't have an HDR environment yet of pit lane at IMS. Mm -hmm. So I had to try and work with that. So it's actually a racetrack that could be used. And then I brought in this image. What I want to tell the audience is that you're not you don't have like 10 years of rendering experience, nope. right? So you've been on this product for since it came out, a few months, and you've been hacking through this and doing quite a good job. So just want to make sure the audience knows it doesn't require years of experience to get good at this. No. And in fact, um, what I noticed with this product in particular in comparison to like PhotoView 360, uh, my sister is actually uh, does uh, photography as a hobby. And I was talking to her about this and about the camera and lighting. We'll, we'll talk about the camera here in a little bit. Uh, but it was all terminology inside of, of Visualize that somebody that's familiar with photography knows. And so when I was talking about things like you know, perspective and uh, various aspects of the, the camera settings, and she understood what I was talking about. Now, she doesn't know the CAD side of things, and she'd have to learn the controls, but very familiar with what she's trying to accomplish with the image. The key things to remember with lighting is go to our HDR first. In our blog post, to your point, that was before there was any training on Visualize. That was before help menus and things like that of learning how the software worked and everything. And most importantly, I was trying to get specific shadows with that. So that's where professional lights come in great. We want to try and use our HDRs first. Then we'll bring in our, our, our back plate for our background. And then, very last thing, if we have to, that's even you know as a last resort, uh, is bringing in directional lighting. So now let's talk camera, right? So we need to be able to shoot this. So we need a camera perspective, uh, and we will show how to, to set that up. And then, a little trick I like doing to be able to come back to that camera view down the road when we're using Visualize. So let's go so while that's happening you're we're going to be showing like the camera isn't that just the view that you're seeing or you can actually have a camera take a picture from a different angle than what you physically see Help me understand that part. Yeah, so it is what we see here, right? So that's that's really your location. Camera. Right, okay. right. So you bring up two points here. One is the location side of things. Where is the camera actually pointing? Where are we positioned? But then also, what are the settings to that camera? In this case, we've got our default camera set up. That doesn't look right. You're right. It's like the car's jacked up in the back. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's why. So in fact, let's fix this. So we've got our free camera set up. I I do this oftentimes, is create a free camera. I'm going to copy, just control C and control V to copy and paste this camera and make that my active camera. And I'll lock one of these cameras down. So we'll lock that camera down. We'll specify this. Let's delete this camera. And I'll specify this to be my default camera. <clears throat> 
this is the aspect that I suggest folks consider doing and look at because we want to be able to move around. If I go back to my free camera, maybe I'm wanting to tweak uh, an image. Maybe I'm wanting to adjust some things. I can have a free camera where I can move this model around, but then come back to my default camera and I'm mm. all set here. Okay. This is the aspect where I was talking about from adjusting things on the post-processing side like vignettes or uh, setting up depth of fill field and things that photography folks are all used to. These post-processing are part of SolidWorks Professional or uh, Visualize Professional. So if you don't have Visualize Professional, they are not accessible to you then? Correct. Okay. Right. So we want to be able to set up perspective and things, which is what we adjusted on that, and set up a new camera and lock it. That's something I recommend is being able to have one locked down so you can go back to it, and then one is a free camera. So now we set up for our action, so we need to be able to render this. Inside of Visualize, once we have our camera set and everything all set, it's really as easy as just saying output tools and do our render. So we'll give it a, you know, a file name, then we can pick different aspects, maybe the resolution we want to adjust, make it uh, a little bit crisper and clearer. We can also pick different settings on this. You know, we can use our fast setting or accurate and slide up this bar. This is where uh, you're going to get higher quality images, but it takes longer because it's the number of passes mm -hmm. that Visualize has to go through. And then here's a little small spot that doesn't show up, that's one of the biggest things I like in, prof in Visualize Professional is the queue. So I can set up all these different images and I say send it to the queue and now I can stack up a queue, get ready to go home at night, tell my machine to render up 20 images versus setting this up, render and stop, setting this up, render and stop, even though Visualize is pretty fast. That's very helpful because then you don't have to tie up your CPU if you want to do a high-end render. Right. So just to remember passes are time. Uh, we need to work up to the quality we want, start low, see what you get, and start working your way up. And then remember the render queue is, is available in professional. So let's talk on the reshoot side of things. Well, if we were to make a change inside of SolidWorks, and we, like in this model, for this case, we actually adjusted it so that it has a different configuration where there's that air scoop here you can see in the image here. When I change it and I come back into Visualize, I get this pop-up here that says, do you want to re-import? When I say yes, all of the geometry updates for me. So that was the importance of, one, setting up to monitor the file, but then, two, how I set it up uh, to monitor automatically so it knows that that body is supposed to be the same body. Key things to remember here is the upfront choices matter. Uh, Setting up to monitor the file and also setting up that automatic will help in these kinds of changes. And then when it comes time to render all of this, if we've got our queues set up, we can then re-render queues. And you can see here's an output that we got from that rendering up, looking like it's at IMS there. So PhotoView 360 is best for early in the design stage. If you think about it, who has to buy in to your concepts? It's usually engineers and designers. It's folks on the product side that need to know, how does this look when it's rendered? How is this actually going to look maybe for some surfacing aspects? I need to know in this squirt gun how this uh, curvature actually looks, so I want to use PhotoView 360. And while I didn't show how to import the models uh, in Visualize, I set that up to be pretty easy to do for that specific case. If there's dramatic changes, it's a little bit more time consuming and difficult inside of Visualize to, to make the adjustments. So if there's a lot of changes that are happening and I'm comfortable and familiar with, with PhotoView 360 and it's not necessarily outward facing or customer facing, PhotoView 360 is still a great tool and it's why SolidWorks isn't getting rid of it. On the Visualize side of things, we need to think who has to buy into this. If we're closer to our release date, actual customers and salespeople have to buy into this product being real. And so we need that higher quality. The other side is how, do, how long do we have to create this and content, the actual images. It takes a while to render stuff in PhotoView 360, visualize fast. In fact, 
this, these two images were actually rendered both uh, in one in Photo View 360 here on the left, and you can see it takes almost 13 minutes. The one on the right that actually has more intricate material um, actually has some foam there in that dark and clear see-through plastic. A little bit more intense. I don't know, Todd, if you would agree that's a little more intense image. Yeah, it looks like they're using uh, you know, translucent plastics with opaque plastics. Uh, you've got the silver spring in there, and it looks, you know, they got all kinds of materials going on inside. Right. Well, that actually took less than two minutes to render oh inside, of Photo View, or inside of SolidWorks Visualize, so seven times faster. Yeah, that is a lot faster and a higher quality product or output. Right. So how is that even possible? Well, Visualize actually can leverage both our CPU and GPU. This image is split and actually has this one on the left 10 seconds of just using CPU power. But GPUs are actually really fast. And Visualize can use a hybrid of both. And you can see on the right here, same 10 seconds when you leverage both your CPU and GPU, the increased quality, which that's all about speed. And GPUs are typically found on the graphics card, correct? correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a recap how to go through this from the process. Think of it like you're shooting a movie. Set up your cast, figure out what your cast is going to be, how are we going to bring them into this, this movie. We set up our makeup, which is our materials, drag, just drag and drop and just tweak it until we get it right. Then set up our lights, camera, action, and then Shoot. inevitably reshoot. Shoot if there's any design changes or if you don't like it. So it looks great, and it looks like a real simple process. Yeah. And then as far as what to use when, that was clearly the question. I've got a table here. In the upcoming weeks, I'll post a blog post on this with a little bit more details on what to use and when. But here's a nice little chart of when should I use Visualize, when should I use Photo View 360. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming, and Brandon, thanks for presenting SolidWorks Visualize. And don't forget to, if you need more information, always go to our website um, and become a subscriber to our newsletter. And it looks forward, I'll look forward to seeing everyone next month, and we're going to talk about DriveWorks Express, which is an actual product that you already have in SolidWorks. So we're going to show you how to use and leverage SolidWorks Express, and then a few others upcoming SolidWorks PCB. So from Todd Majewski and 3D Vision Technologies, thank you very much and have a great day.